The essence of SAP Retail Master Data, my recent blog post, was all about massively creating product data, location data, and product data that's location specific. But after you've brilliantly orchestrated master data to create master data, perhaps billions of rows, how do you maintain this over time with least effort? Your strategy is to maintain data at the highest validity area possible and only maintain exceptions at a lower validity area. This first principle is made possible in SAP Retail by reference handling. This is the key concept that affects everyone who creates or changes retail material master data. It begins with master data experts who design and configure your reference handling in the first place. To be clear, the field level design is specific to your implementation. But the list of very interested parties is quite long. For example, data migration experts must respect and depend on reference handling to properly load master data. And ultimately, end users need to understand implementation specific details so they can maintain data efficiently. Let's have a quick look in the system to see what it means to maintain data at the highest possible validity area. Basic data is the highest possible validity area because data maintained here for a given article is applicable everywhere. But other retail material master views offer a selection of lower validity areas. For example, on the sales view, data can be maintained by distribution chain, but exceptions can be maintained all the way down to plant level. If possible, you'd prefer to maintain data by distribution chain, not for every plant. On Logistics DC view, you can maintain data at the global validity area, or you can maintain data by plant. On Logistics Store view, you can maintain data at the global validity area, by distribution chain, and by plant. Location-specific article master data is massive. Master data used to create master data, and so-called reference handling, makes least effort maintenance possible. Maintain data at the highest possible validity area boils down to this. If you can maintain material master data globally, that's a lot less work than maintaining the same data by plant. Let's review how it's orchestrated and then drill down. We create reference articles and use them as templates to create new articles. Every article is created in a merchandise category, including reference articles, but a reference article can be assigned to multiple merchandise categories. When a new article is created, it's assigned to a merchandise category. Therefore, the reference article assigned to that merchandise category is used as the template for creating the new article. Master data values maintained in the reference article are copied from the reference article to the new article. That includes article master data for the global reference sites, one row of master data for the global reference store, and one row of data for the global reference distribution center. After creating the new article, the work of the reference article is finished, but the story of reference sites and reference handling has just begun. Articles are usually extended to sites by execution of listing, but regardless of how an article is extended, location-specific master data values for that article and for that global reference store are copied to the new rows as the article is extended to new stores. Location-specific data values for the article in the global reference distribution center are copied to new rows as the article is extended to new distribution centers. You have field-level control of which fields are copied from the reference article to the new article and therefore which fields are copied as the article is extended to new plants. Not only do you have field level control, it's critical that you review the field by field settings and ensure they're correct for your master data processes. Make an intentional choice. You can't blindly accept the default configuration, which is just a good start. That ends the review of massively creating master data. Now let's get to the heart of the matter at hand. What happens during master data maintenance is best illustrated by observing the system. So let's go to an example. Let's begin by creating a new article to demonstrate reference handling, especially to see the behavior of location-specific product data. I'll touch most of the article master views without maintaining any data. Notice all of the master data that's already filled in. It was copied from the reference article assigned to the merchandise category that this article is being created in. And save, the article is created. Now look at table bar C for this article, which holds material plant data. There are two rows of data, one for plant R970 and one for R971. 
These are the global reference sites. These two records were maintained in the reference article, so they were copied to this new article. Global reference plants for DCs and stores are assigned in T-code WSS1. R970 is the global reference DC, and R971 is the global reference store. Let's maintain some default values for lot sizing at the global validity area. Save the article. Refresh the data displayed from RC and the values for the reference plants are displayed as expected. Now let's maintain the article and execute listing. Listing will extend the article to plants. Refresh the data displayed from RC, and what do we see? Well, more data. But notice the values that were copied as the reference article was extended to new sites. Plant CU00 is a DC. Values from the reference DC were copied to plant CU00. All of the other plants beginning with CU are stores. The values from the reference store were copied for those plants. The globally maintained values for the reference DC and store flow down to the new rows of data. Now let's globally maintain the lot sizing value of EX for stores. Refresh the data displayed from RC, and all of the stores have a value of EX. Now let's maintain values specifically for store CU03. Refresh the data displayed from RC, and only store CU03 has the new values. Here's where it starts to get interesting. The next step is the whole point of this discussion. Let's globally maintain lot sizing value as HB for stores. Save the change for all stores, and refresh the data displayed from RC. Hang on, the global change wasn't applied to CU03. That's right, the system tracked that a value was maintained at a lower validity area. This is called a deviation. Therefore, the changes at a higher validity area don't flow down and overwrite exceptionally maintained data. Let's look back at the Material Master more closely. This is the logistics store view. No validity area specified, so this is the global validity area. Lot sizing is globally set to EX for stores. So how do you know if deviations exist for other validity areas? There's a button for that. Clicking the button displays the deviations that exist. In this case, the differently maintained data for store CU03. Notice that the global lot sizing value maintained for this article for the global reference store is EX. 
but a differently maintained value of H1 exists for store CU03. When maintaining material master data, you have visibility to the deviations. Back to MARC data. The lot sizing value maintained for this article for store CU03 is H1. All the other stores are set to HB. We saw that the deviation of H1 wasn't overwritten by data maintained at a higher validity area. Now let's observe two final changes. Let's set lot sizing at the global validity area to be H1. That's the same value as the deviation for store CU03. Refresh the data displayed from RC, and all the stores have a lot sizing value of H1, including store CU03. Now let's set lot sizing at the global level to be EX. Refresh the data displayed from RC, and all stores have lot sizing value of EX, including store CU03. The value for store CU03 was updated. Why? Because when the lot sizing value for the global reference store, R971, and the lot sizing value for store CU03 were maintained with the same value, then the deviation being tracked by the system was cleared. When the deviation no longer exists, the data maintained at a higher validity area is once again relevant. It flows down to the lower validity areas. Harnessing the unique nature of SAP Retail Master Data is the key to massively creating and maintaining master data with least effort. Carefully curated master data is used to create more master data. That's the primary enabling SAP Retail Master Data concept. But to effectively maintain billions of rows of data, especially product location specific data, you need to dig deeper. You need to be familiar with the field level details of reference handling for your particular SAP retail implementation. With these two concepts understood, your strategy is to maintain data at the highest possible validity area and let the nature of SAP retail work to your advantage. These concepts apply to every role that creates or changes SAP retail master data.